this is an, some examples of where you might draw your lines. You can see some of them are more straight up and down or some, some little slanted, but all of them kind of divide the graph into two halves, the fruit side and the veggie side. So congratulations, we just created a model that we can use to help a computer make a decision. When a computer sees a new food, it will plot a new point on the graph and use that to decide whether it's a fruit or a vegetable. Let's see how our models do with some food, with some test foods. The next several slides have different foods to test against the model. Let's see how well our model does in deciding if something is a fruit or a veggie. The first food we are going to try is the raspberry. Now the recommended values are sweetness 9 and eat 10. If you have tasted a raspberry, you can choose your own numbers. They don't have to be 9 and 10. Then you're going to kind of, you can plot the point if you want to, or just mentally pick where it would be for, for this particular number. It would be 9 and 10. I put it right there, which would classify it as a fruit. On your assignment document, we're going to go to slide 7. And for raspberry, our model said fruit, and the actual answer is the raspberry is a fruit. So this model is doing a good prediction for raspberry. We're going to go through the next slides together. You can stay here on your, on your assignment and type in what your model suggests. So you're going to have to probably go back and forth between your graph and this page in your document so that you can type in what your model says and what the actual answer is. This is where you're going to fill out your answers and then the chart because your chart might be different from mine so you're going to use your chart to determine where it fell. The next one we're going to try is a pumpkin. The recommended features are three and two so I would take my dot and you can do it actually by typing an F or V if you'd like or you can just do it mentally and I would go to the three for sweetness and the two for eat. And this is definitely falling on the veggie side. So my model says it's a vegetable and it really is a vegetable. So we were two for two. I would put vegetable, vegetable. The next one we're gonna try is a tomato. Now, I think everybody's probably tasted a tomato before. You can decide on your own number for sweetness and for eat. On this, the recommendation is six and six. So I would come over here and I come here and it falls just kind of barely, but it falls in a fruit. So on my document for tomato, I need to say fruit. Now, what do you think it actually is? Is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? The answer is it's a fruit. Let's go to the next one. We're going to try cucumber. If you've tasted a cucumber, then you can come up with your own sweetness and eat. But I think cucumbers are actually pretty easy to eat, so I would give it probably a good number because I slice them. Uh, but we're going to go with five and four, and it puts it just barely in the fruit range. So for me, my model classifies it as a fruit. What about your model? Where does it classify it? And a cucumber is technically a fruit because it has seeds. So um, our model did get it right, or at least mine did, and you can, it kind of depends on how you drew your line, if it was a fruit or a vegetable for you. And so once again, there's not a right or wrong answer. It's what did your model predict? Let's go to the next one. We're gonna do a lemon. This one has sweetness as two. This is, lemons are not very sweet. And for eating, it has a five, so I'd come over here and it's going to put my lemon as a vegetable. So that's what my model predicts. But is a lemon a vegetable? It is a fruit. So you can fill that out on your chart. So my model predicted vegetable, but the actual answer is a fruit. The next one is a sweet potato. 
It has sweet potatoes are really good, I think. And the sweetness they have here is seven and the eat is a five. So it's about right here. And so my, my model says that it is a fruit. What did your model say? But well, we probably know that potatoes are vegetables. So our model is not always going to get it correct. Most models will probably get this answer incorrect, which means our foods were misclassified. This happens in real life too. Sometimes models make mistakes and get incorrect answers. For something like classifying fruits and vegetables, it may not be a huge deal. But if we were making decisions about people instead, this could be a really big deal. This is why testing is so important. We need to make sure our models are doing a good job before letting them make decisions for us. We have four more to try. The next one is pepper. And peppers can be sweet. So we've got a seven and a seven, but you can use a different number if you'd like. And it's gonna classify a pepper as a fruit. So is a pepper a fruit? According to the definition of a fruit, a pepper is a fruit because it has seeds in the middle. And let's try avocado. Sweetness they have at a four and eat is a four. And you can adjust the numbers to what you believe for avocado. So according to my model, it was a veggie. An avocado is actually a fruit just like some of the other ones. A lot of time, a lot of things that we might consider a vegetable, we might even find them in the vegetable section of the store, but technically they are defined as a fruit. Now, just to show that models need, that computers still need a lot of teaching when it comes to the models, let's try ice cream. It is a food and the computer can classify it. So we've got a lot of sweetness, and it can be a little difficult to eat, so we've got it kind of up here. And our model is going to classify ice cream as a fruit. And what is it really? I might say something like it's a dairy product or it's, you know, like junk food. And our last one is also one of these kind of silly things that would still get classified because the computer doesn't think it just does exactly what it was told so if we fed it this information it would classify it a cheeto has no sweetness and it's pretty easy to eat so it's going to come over here and it'd be classified as a veggie i think we can all agree these examples are pretty silly they're an example of using a model for something other than what it was intended for. Since we trained our model only on fruits and vegetables, it doesn't work very well on other types of foods. If we wanted to improve our model, we'd probably need a lot more data and a lot more features, more than just how sweet and easy to eat the food is. This gets a lot harder for us as humans to understand and we couldn't use our graph paper anymore. Luckily, computers can help us with this. Tomorrow, on our next lesson, we'll see how a computer looks at lots of data and lots of features to help make decisions. If you were to break down what we did today into steps for a computer to follow, how would you describe those steps? So think about what we did, graphing the data. You know, first we had to come up with its sweetness and its easiness to eat. We had to graph it. We had to kind of draw a line to split our graph and then classify. So think about those steps. This is going to help us with tomorrow's lesson when we delve into this a little bit more deeply. And then let's also revisit our question of the day. How does classification work? So on your answer, on your, so on your assignment, just go to our wrap up and answer these last two questions, then you are ready to turn it in.